Hello there, welcome to Brian Lomax Movie Talk. I recently finished Bates Motel. I did review the first season way back when on my channel, and I've only just now gotten around to, to actually finishing it. Now, anyone who knows me knows that the Psycho film franchise is, is probably, I would say, my number one uh, straight up horror franchise you know if you're just talking horror if, if you want to throw like sci-fi into the mix as well then i'd probably go with alien um but uh but if you're just talking straight up horror no other kind of genre but yeah psycho i i do love the character of norman bates the complexity of him uh so when the tv series was announced personally i thought it was a bad idea i thought it would all end in tears um but no i loved the first season i was so more, more, yeah, more surprised than anyone, and like I say, it's taken me a while, but I've finished it, and I gotta say, I may like the TV series Bates Motel more than the movies. Uh, now that's not a put down on the movies, because as I just said, how much I love them. That's the reason I wanted to reiterate how much I love them. Uh, but it just goes to show how good this series is. The first four seasons of this show kind of play, well, they, they don't kind of, they are. They're, they're like a prequel to the events of the movie, if the movie took place in a more modern time. Um, and, and obviously I had a few little bits tweaked and added here and there. But yeah, the fifth series... <clears throat> essentially goes into full-on remake it it remakes it, it it tells its own version of the original 1960 film so we get marion crane coming you know back into the fray so to speak uh now i do have to just warn you spoilers here i will i will give away spoilers just because it it, it you know it's, it's an old series now if you haven't seen it already i do urge you to check it out but I, yeah spoilers um they do change what happens so you know like marion crane doesn't get killed in the shower um they they build it up to that moment and you you know you're expecting it and it's like this is it this is the iconic moment and it doesn't happen and you're like okay where are they going with this and then the shower scene does happen a little bit later on but with someone else and it, it's just it's a masterstroke because it plays on our expectations of what we know but also gives us something different, but which feels earned um, because of all the character development that's gone into it and who ends up being in the shower, the slight twist as well with the sexuality there. But um, yeah, I really loved it and I, I didn't think I would love it as much as I do. Um, most of that, I guess, is to the writing, you know, all credit to the writers, but certainly the cast of this series throughout were phenomenal uh you know particularly the leads so uh vera farmiga as norma bates just yeah steals the show freddie highmore is an absolutely brilliant take on or has an absolutely brilliant take on norman bates to me it's up there with anthony perkins it's probably not quite fair to say that when you think about it because anthony perkins had much less screen time and much more much less story with which to yeah bring us into that character so and i do think if you look at season five and you look at the scene in which norman is talking to marion crane in the back room you know he makes her the sandwich they they essentially remake that scene but they put different dialogue in there because it kind of pertains to other events that are going on in the series whereas in the film it has to kind of pertain to other things um, but that scene if you compare those two scenes the way that Highmore plays it and the way that Perkins plays it I do think that Perkins maybe does have the edge there um, I, again that's no discredit to, to Highmore as an actor because I do think he's phenomenal in this in this series I think as I say most of that is down to the writing they do such a good job um, and it's one of the reasons I like Norman Bates as a character anyway, as, a, as, a, as an antagonist slash protagonist. Um, he's one of the few people who kind of is both in, in a film. Um, I, I, I think that they do such a good job of writing this guy and making you sympathise with him, making you 
Yeah, because 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 he's he's not a bad guy. This is the thing. He's cracked. You know, part of his psyche has cracked because of events that happened to him when he was younger and he's not been managed right. You could blame Norma for that. But, you know, ultimately she loves him and everything she's done for him, she's done out of love. Um, so all of these characters, even though they do bad stuff, even they do, they, you know, they go down some, some rough paths, um, their intentions are always kind of mostly pretty good and and so it makes you sympathize with them and it makes you care for them you know so across these 50 episodes you really grow to care for norman bates and you want him to get out and knowing that you know if you follow the films norman bates does break away from from the the scarred part of his psyche in psycho 4 he manages to overcome so to speak and he gets his happy ending and we don't get that here Norman doesn't get his happy ending and he has to, yeah, well, I don't suppose has to, but he is killed by his brother. His brother feels like he doesn't have much choice. I mean, either way, Norman's a dead man, you know. Uh, he's he's either going to go to the you know, death, death sentence by lethal injection or what is essentially here a mercy killing by his brother. Um, Max Terrio, I think that's how you pronounce his name, Terrio or... He's great as the brother. Again, real great character development. He starts off in the series being someone who, you know, he applies himself well to the drug trade. He just kills someone in the first season. It's been a long time since I've seen the first season, actually, but I remember him hitting someone with a car and thinking, oh, blimey, how do you redeem yourself from that? But across the course of the series, he breaks away from that life. And Olivia Cook's character, she kind of becomes his salvation in a way she she represents something to him that is worth changing his ways that is worth getting out of that life in order to start a family in order to go on the straight and narrow and do things differently um, but he never runs from his past he never he never tries to ignore his past uh, and I think that's brilliantly captured in a scene where he goes for a job interview and he pretty much out and out says look I may not be the best candidate for the job. I worked in the drug trade. Here are the skills I had developed as, as a part of being in the drug trade. I can apply them to something more useful. I, I, you know, that honesty there from him uh, and, and the refusal to, you know, not try and push aside his history, I think really helps us to to feel like he redeems himself, I guess, in a way. Uh, you know, even though he has killed someone. <laughs> Uh, another great character that I, I really loved in the series was Nesta Carbonell's Sheriff. Uh, someone who at the start wasn't too sure about, but as the series went on, it really warmed to this guy. Um, he's very he's probably the most dubious of characters when you look at the main cast. He's probably the one who's got the most dirt on his hands, shall we say. Um, I know... I know uh, Norman has but it's kind of like he has to have the benefit of the doubt because of his psychological issues no the sheriff he knows what he's doing he you know he he has a clear head when he, he makes certain choices so he, he can be held responsible for his actions so again they just do a really good job over the course of the series of making you care about this guy um he goes through so many ups and downs makes certain choices that are morally repugnant but it's through his relationship with Norma that he has this real redemptive quality. Um, it, it also becomes his downfall because it leads him, obviously, into this confrontation with Norman. Um, uh, but, yeah, in the end, he ended up being one of my favourite characters. And I was, I was really sad to see how he ended. I think that the way he lets his guard down in his final moments and kind of allows Norman to get the best of him, I thought was maybe a little bit of a stretch for this character. I, I find it hard to believe that he would turn his back on Norman so so easily like that. But that being said, he was in a highly emotional state. He had been through the ringer, uh, you know, gunshot wound and all that lot, and was, I guess, at the end of his tether. But yeah, uh, other than that, I just thought, really great character. Nesta Carbonell gave some great moments, particularly like in season four, 
when uh, when he finds Norma, when he finds what Norman has done and his reaction to finding her body, I just thought he nailed it. And yeah, I just, to be honest, season four feels like an ending. What, what it feels like, because as I say, season one to four are kind of like a prequel to the Psycho story as we know it, with season five almost being like a remake. And I think they end season four in such a way that it leaves you at a point where you could then go off and watch Psycho the movie and it would feel almost like a direct sequel other than the fact that you know the the, the time and date the period detail kind of is, 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 is out of place but story-wise it would work pretty well as, as a direct sequel to season one and four because it just leaves us it leaves Norman in a place where we find him at the beginning of that film essentially um, so yeah, you, they could have ended it after season four and it would have been a really great ending. Thankfully they didn't because season five is, it doesn't feel like something that's just tacked on. It's, it's, yeah, as I say, essentially a remake of, of the original film and it works really well because they're able to give us like three and a half, not three and a half, that they're able to give us about six hours of television, six, seven hours of television. Uh, given that the, the episodes are like 45 minutes each, 43 minutes. Um, so they're able to explore a lot more. And they're able to do a lot more with Sam Loomis and uh, really make this guy out to be a bit of a dirtbag. You get the sense he's a bit of a dirtbag in the film, but there's not much of a character there to speak of. Whereas here, they really make us hate him. And obviously when he gets his comeuppance, it, there's something quite satisfying about that. I do feel for his wife though. Uh, I think they do a good job. Again, this is another thing that they do with the show, which is that they take characters like that, like her, Sam Loomis's wife, and they put her through the ringer, even though she doesn't deserve it, even though she's done nothing wrong. And yeah, she goes through some darkness and then, and, and we don't really see her get out of it. She's just she's had all this darkness go, that she's had to go through. And that's that's just, that's it. Um, and it, it's a bit more realistic, you know? Uh, like, Norman has come into her life. And like a whirlwind, like a tornado, he's he's revealed things to her, you know, about her husband, this, that, and the other, and then taken things from her. And, and then that's it, you know? Um, and she trusted him. That trust was broken. And there's nothing she can do about it. And you, you feel for her, but that's life. She's a victim. Because it would be very easy, I think, with a show like this to make everyone that Norman kills be a douchebag. And yes, Sam Loomis is a douchebag in this, but he's not the only one who gets hurt as a result of Norman Bates killing him. You know, it, it, it has ramifications in other people's lives. It destroys other people's lives. And I think that there would be, uh, um, I guess, the temptation in a series like this to just make all of his victims douchebags so that when he kills them, it's almost like a form of heroicism. It's almost like he's doing society a service, doing society a favour. Um, and yeah, so the fact that they show you that isn't the case, that yeah, even though he takes out some scumbags, uh, there are still victims to his crimes other than those people he's killed. Another really great character for me, uh, a rather amusing character and quite scary as well, is Chick Hogan, um, played by Ryan Hurst. This dude proper looks and sounds like Josh Brolin in this series. When, it, when he first came in, I've not seen him in anything else. I know he was in Sons of Anarchy and he's done a few other things, but um, yeah, he, when he first came in, I'm like, is that Josh Brolin? How did they, how did they get Josh Brolin? It's not Josh Brolin, it's, it's obviously it's Ryan Hurst, but yeah, dude could proper play Josh Brolin's brother in, in, in a film or a TV show, or whatever. But um, no, he's great in this. He's so off kilter, so off balance. There's something not quite right upstairs with this guy. Um, and like I say, at, at the start when he's first introduced, he's quite a scary character because he's unpredictable. Um, and you, you worry about what he's going to do next. And then in season four, season five, when he kind of ingratiates himself into Norman's life, decides he's going to write a book, 
uh, true life true life story about what Norman is doing because he's the one who, he's the one who's cottoned on to, to to what Norman's done with his mother and the fact that his mother is part of his personality one of his personalities um, he, he's going to bank on it he's going to he's going to make book from it but this guy's got no filter at all whatever's going on in his head just comes out and there's no fear there with him you know whether it's speaking to a police officer or whether it's speaking to the sheriff uh, who's you know broken out of prison in season five and he's now holding a gun to his head the guy's got no filter he's got no fear and ultimately that is his downfall um but yeah i, I love the performance by hurst and i just think the character is so quirky and scary and funny and all of these different things uh and i i think again yeah props to Ryan Hurst for, for making this guy so enjoyable to watch. They do such a good job, particularly in season four and five. Uh, and I know I'm, I'm probably harping on mostly about season four and five. They're the ones that are most fresh in my memory. Um, but they're also the two seasons that kind of bring us to the, to the Norman that we know from the movies. Um, and season four kind of deals with this storyline in which Norman is kind of he's going into a, a mental home you know that his mum his mum is finally acknowledging that there's yeah there's, something needs to be done something not quite right with him but she's always being torn between you know being that person that he needs and being the person that he wants um, and unfortunately she airs too much on the side of the person that he wants um which is you know a friend and all that uh but uh the the whole plot in season four when Norman's kind of mental state really does come to the fore when he starts seeing his mother a lot more and then in season five when it completely overtakes him. I you know, I I had a an uncle who had bi bipolar with schizophrenia and there's a lot of stuff in this show, and I know that this show really does ramp up the a lot of the aspects to do with with Norman's mental health, possibly to do it to a degree that isn't quite believable. But hey, that's television. But even so, I still think it does a very good job of getting into the mind of someone who has these conditions. And there was a lot of times in the series that really made me think about my uncle and and how how he lived and and a, a lot of you know you look at norman and and what he sees in his mind you know he, he has everything through rose rose tinted glasses so to speak where, where, where his mum's concerned like he'll go into the kitchen and you've got beams of sunlight coming through the window and everywhere's nice and clean and there's nicely cooked food on the table but when somebody comes round and, and, and we see through their eyes and we see the reality, you know, dirty pots and pans everywhere, it's grey, it's dull, it's messy, it's not been cleaned in a long time. It it did make me think about my uncle and and just what he went through and, and, and the things he saw and heard, because I know that, you know, Obviously, with his condition, he'd experienced voices and and seeing things that weren't there, and and it yeah, I don't know. It just it struck a chord, I guess. And I guess I, what I'm saying is that the there is something about seeing Norman go through this journey that helped me in a way identify more with with my uncle. Um, you know, I, I never had the closest relationship with him. I think a lot, a lot of the troubles he had, uh, you know, had something to do with that. We could never get too close and stuff. Uh, but in in the later years of his life, we had him round quite a bit, and it was just, and there was this sense that there's a human being in there. You know, there's this, and and, and I think we treat the mentally ill sometimes like they're not fully human and i think this show does a good job of acknowledging that you know you look at the the last season the final season when the new sheriff is 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 going after norman she's got her sights set on him and everyone else around is kind of like yeah this this guy is a, is a maniac he's 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 evil he's they're seeing him through a very particular lens and that is a, the lens of someone who has experienced his crimes 
through his victims because they're victims himself you know they, they've seen the dead bodies they they know what he's done to people they love and that's it whereas his brother you know he he can he can, he doesn't just see this killer he sees what's underneath he sees the human being he sees the soft gentle human being that is Norman and 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 the fact that he's he's engulfed in this mental kind of brokenness um and i i think the film does a good job of highlighting just the way that sometimes we throw the book at people without truly getting to grips with the the mental problems that a lot of people within the prison system have you know there's a lot of people that are incarcerated that that maybe are treated as just evil and and that's just not the case it's it's i think it's maybe too easy for us to say that it, it allows us to lock them up throw away the key job done now we don't have to deal with it but uh, when you look at a character like norman and acknowledge that you know there are people out there like that maybe not as extreme as this again because it's television but uh but yeah it makes me sympathize it made, it made me identify with my own blood relatives uh, and it made me sympathize with people who have similar conditions so yeah really great series that that doesn't just use mental health as a as, as a way of exploitation i guess to to make a character and make a series about death and murder and, and all this that and the other but actually does take a look at the issues surrounding mental health and people's responses to it. I could go on a lot further anyway. Uh, I mean, Olivia Cook as Emma Decody, I've not even mentioned her to be honest, but yeah, I, I just, I really loved her throughout this series. And I always had the sense of impending doom with her from the get go. I always thought, I mean, I mean, it didn't help that they, that she was a character who was, who was constantly on a respirator. She had lung problems, this, that, and the other. So it was almost like her cards were marked anyway. So when she comes into Norman's life, you're kind of like, the set, the setting this character up for tragedy. She is going to be a victim of Norman, and that's that's what I always thought. That's what I always expected. I always thought that would be the ultimate tragic moment in the series. That that Emma somehow you know ends up being killed by by Norman and even more so once she started dating his brother because you know how how much more tragic would that be for for the brother that his his wife girlfriend whatever is then killed by his own brother and it's just that's where I thought it was leading I'm glad it didn't because it means again it, that the series isn't predictable instead they went somewhere that I didn't predict and I'm glad that she got to have a happy ending uh with with norman's brother so yeah you know it's, it's not all gloom and darkness there are some happy endings but as i say i could go on much further um but i think i'm going to leave it there if you haven't seen bates motel i do strongly urge you to check it out it is one of those series that, that just gets better and better and i do think that the strongest seasons for me were four and five um like i said i, I think by season three they started to realize what worked what didn't and they started to trim some of the fat in season three and then season four five was just yeah really great gripping television uh i, I loved it i i honestly think it's one of the best tv shows of all time it's got a very satisfying ending something that a lot of tv shows don't have uh, and it's something that i hate when you follow a tv series for so many years only to get to a, an ending that was just uh, right okay really that's it um for me being a fan of the movies those original movies this had one of the most satisfying endings i could have hoped for tragic admittedly tragic um but all the better for it in many ways so yeah do check out the series if you haven't seen it already uh, it's a five star series for me it's it's one of my favorite series of all time can't wait to, can't wait until a, few, a couple of years has passed and then i'll go back and watch it again um i've just lent them all to my mum at the moment because I, I think she should watch it i think she'll like it uh but yeah if you have seen it what do you think about bates motel do leave your comments down below thank you for watching this video don't forget to hit that notification button just to make sure that you uh, receive 
notifications of when I upload videos. Hit the subscribe button as well if you haven't already. And yeah, until next time, crack it.